Um, sorry about the background noise. There's going to be uh, the washing machine is filling, um, so uh, we are working with that today. Um, I um, am doing crochet, so I had to uh, learn last night or yesterday on uh, different techniques on how to do it. Um, I have never put granny squares together before. I, whenever I've done a blanket, I've just kept going or I've gone round and round in, in, in a circle. Um, so I, um, I looked at my pattern. Remember we're doing this pattern, sorry. I've gone off half cocked again. I always do that. I have this conversation in my head and then I come in and expect you to be with me. Um, we're doing this pattern, okay? So I've done all my squares and now we're putting it together, okay? So before I go on to something else, hi Aran, how are you? And Linda and Natalie and Carolyn, that's lovely to see you all. That's lovely. Lovely, lovely. So um, I have been doing my squares, all right? So I've done those three colours and my squares, okay? So, um, that, this is the beginning of my sleeve. So, I've got another two here. Now, the, uh, let's have a look here. The pattern says to do whip stitch, okay? Uh, it says here, join in them all using a neat whip stitch. So this was my whip stitch. I thought that was fairly neat and consistent, but you can see it on both sides and I didn't like that. So I decided that I wasn't gonna do that. So um, I, I haven't. Um, another one that I saw, they did a, it, it's a slip stitch and it leaves a pattern on the top. Um, and I quite liked that, but it meant that I had to really learn it and uh, I, quite frankly I haven't had the time. Um, my squares are bigger than they say they should be on here. Um, they reckon that your square should be um, nine centimetres, okay? And mine are a, a, a bit bigger. Mine come to 10, near enough 10. So I'm going to make it to the, probably the next size down. I'm going to make it a 16, 18 instead of a 20, 22. Um, and have, uh, I'm going to work with that, okay? And we'll see how we go from there. Now I have uh, already put four together. I'm using a, um, what's it called, a ladder stitch, okay? Now you can see it a little bit on the back, okay? But it disappears pretty much altogether on the front, okay? So, uh, do you want to do it too tight? Don't worry. Um, so I was quite happy with that. I was happy enough with that that I'll, I'll deal with it. And I think over time this will cover. I mean, the one that I saw to do was really pretty. Um, Jen was also in yesterday and she was saying, look, look, there's this one which you do join as you go, um, which looked amazing. But because I've already got all my squares finished, there's no point in me doing that. And I think it would work better if, um, if your outside edge, your outside, uh, um, round is all the same colour and you do one and then you finish this last bit as you're joining them together which I thought was pretty cool um, so we'll look at that for another day I think so we've got I've already put these together um, I need four for a sleeve so we're just going to put this together and I will uh, talk you through that. It's it's lovely. I'm I'm really like it. And 
odd colours to put together but I think they work. I'm going to do um, these colours are going to be my um, my cardigan. Uh, so it's a little bit different to what we were doing. Now I don't need that. I need that and I need that. Okay so got my knitting needle here. Um, I love these pebbles. I, uh, I don't I don't think we actually do them and I don't know whether we can get them. Can we get them Sarah? But these pebbles, this is my knitting one um, and I've got quilting ones and um, Sarah likes the Roxanne needles which are very good, very very good. <laughs> but I like the fact that they come in a little, a little box and all of these are a different colour. <laughs> we all like our own things don't we? So right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, as I've got those colours for the other sleeve, so I'm going to put these two colours so none of them are the same. So we're going to, I'm trying to think which is the, I think this is the best way to do it. Okay, so you've got your two corner um, chain here, okay, so I'm just going to go under my two um, two bits in the, in the uh, second chain in, I'm going to go and into my stitch there, okay, and I'm going to leave myself a tail and then I'm going to find my second stitch over here. Now this is where I fall down, I'm really rubbish at it. So I think that stitch there goes with this one. That's right, so I'm going to go in here. So under the two for the stitch, like that. Okay, and I'm going to come back, go in under the next stitch, and under that one. So this is ladder stitch, which I found easier doing it with this than I did with um, when I'm putting a toy together, uh, purely and simply because I had holes to, to follow. It's like for kids sewing this was. So I'm going through and then into the next stitch. And I found it tidier definitely tidier than um, doing it the other way the whip stitch now I think the whip stitch is fine as long as you want that to be in uh, in your pattern or if you've done the last round in the same colour for all of them then you, you're not going to see it but because each each one is a different colour I think it becomes more noticeable. So you can see I'm not pulling it tight at the moment and I'm just going in and out like that in all of them. Okay. It's simple putting together. The one that I saw that um, was like a slip stitch, it left a, a nice little pattern on the top. So I think we'll revisit that once we've done this. We'll revisit that because I definitely want to learn how to do that. So we're coming along here and hopefully we've worked it out correctly. But will we end up no we haven't. I did this yesterday. So I've got each I'm not missing one along here. Is there no. So it could be that I've not um, right on here. I think I'll do that one. What's the next step, sir? So 
down from there. So I can do that one again. That one. And then we're going to go through there. There. Okay. So now I've done that. You can see. I've probably done it back to front as well now. Um, you can see here. I now have two lengths. And you're just going to pull this one length, which you can see pulls it all tight into each other and it disappears. And I've done it the wrong way round, I think. No, I haven't. I've done it the right way round. Aha! Done it the right way round. So these. I'm going to have to take it out anyway because I think I've missed one down here. So that's what you do. Make sure that you start at the same point here and work your way up. Okay? And that would be my finished piece. Okay? So the next bit on here, then we want you to add. So the four is not enough, but I think five would be too much. And you're adding bits on the end. Now, if you're doing a small, the smaller sleeve, you only need one row on each end. And I've put two, because I don't mind it being quite a big sleeve. Um, so I've added two, okay? So we're uh, picking up, let's take that out there. We are going to be picking up our end pieces. Okay, so you're doing along here, you're going to, um, you've got 14 stitches from one end to the other. Okay. Uh, So you can go from, you've got 14 stitches, so 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, okay, so that side is 14. So we're going to take this one, this is the one that I used, this is going to be my, um, the one that I've put on the ends, so I'm going in here. Hopefully you're not too happy angled with me when you're doing your thing. I'm just going to go in there and I'm going to pull it through. And I want chain three. One, two, three. It's all worked with uh, trebles. So I've got my one there. Now you're not you're not ignoring the trebles in this case, you're counting that as your first stitch. Okay, and then you're just putting one in each stitch. So, two, three. This is going to be a really short lesson today. <laughs> three, four, five. We're just doing all trebles. Six. Seven. Eight. This one. Eight. Nine. I'd like to try this in a cotton. I mean, this, I love working with um, special double knit, but uh, yeah, I'd like to work with a cotton, I think. So, I've lost count there. What would that be? That would be 12, 13, and then into the first chain there. 14, 
take that. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then we're going to chain up 2, 3. Now, some patterns that you follow, they say for you to only go up 2 there. It gives it a less... Um, less of a, a loop. Can you see there where it's sort of looped? So if we take one out and go into the next one there, you can see it stands up straighter. There's less of a loop. Less of a loop there. So three, four, We've done one end. Yeah. Well, before I went to bed last night, I should have done an, one of these on one end. Okay. Are you keeping count there for me? So what's been going on in your world that you're really excited about? I've been, uh, my sister's coming home next week and I'm very excited about that. So she'll be here Wednesday. I'll pick her up from, uh, from Heathrow. She's coming in about lunchtime, which is a fairly decent time. So that's good. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. There you go. So we're just going to fasten that off there. So pull that through. So we have one end here. Okay, like that. So we're going to do the same on this side because I want to show you how to pick it all up. So, we go through, I tuck that bit over, I hope that it's going to anchor it. Now there's a standing crochet, I ought to have a look into that really. Okay, so. Um, so yeah, so Claire's going to come home because uh, to keep an eye on my mother while we go to Catalonia, which is two weeks, two weeks today. I will be hopefully walking into the villa and Sarah, who goes the day before, will be handing me a frosted glass with a pint of mythos in it. That's the, uh, that's the uh, current plan is to walk into a nice frosted glass. I love that they put them in the freezer. And I'm going to be saying, oh, it's, it's warm in, isn't it? So we're doing, um, so that's my next fortnight. Uh, Sarah's putting uh, new stuff on the website again now is a beautiful blender grouping can't remember how many were in it i meant to count them before i came over um and they are just scrummy so there'll be a fat quarter blend a uh, fat quarter pack in those as well one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen so we Two. I'm just going to put, just go through this. I mean, it's really quick, isn't it? Um, I started on the sleeves because I thought, well, if I have to frog it out, it's not going to take too long, is it? 
bit shorter. So my next thing after doing the sleeves will be to um, uh, will be to put the back together. So the back, the back is like this. So you need to put, I think it's seventeen down in two rows, two rows of 17, so that will be, um, put them together, that won't take too long, and then the stripes then go out from each side, so I don't know whether you do it, do the cardigan, and then, um, and then sew your two rows together or whether you put the rows together we'll have to have a look okay so we got to the end of that one there okay so we now have our we now have our um sleeve bottom now i'm assuming again because I've not read the pattern. Um, what Shulin does uh, to finish with right side to face and upwards, join along there. You're going to do that, and then I think you're going to then do another edging around here of the cuff, um, which is quite uh, quite cool. So. Now we are going to come along here. This is really. Do you block your work? I've never blocked my work. I think they probably, if they were all exactly the same size, they would probably um, sit better. But I, I've never blocked my work. I wouldn't even know how I would go about it. So we're going to come along here, and we're going to pick up all the stitches along here so that we can do this row here okay so we're going to so that's going to be going up my sleeve so we're going to go with so that will go like that okay so we're going to pick up our our ends. Now here, where I've just put these trebles in, here, you're going to put two trebles in each of these, and then one in each of the stitches all the way along, and then two in each of these, which will give me 64 stitches. Okay. So. We go along here. I'm going to chain three, which would be my first treble. Okay. So I'm going one, two, three. And I'm going to grab hold of my ends here. I'm going to travel those with me for uh, a little while. So I'm going to put another treble in there. So I've got two. I'm going to put two more in here. Like that. And then we're going to pick up our each stitch so you want one in your uh, chain space there okay for your one stitch that you've not used yet and then you're picking up each stitch along so along here And 
everybody seems to have trouble picking up stitches with um, knitting. But coming along on the crochet, especially with this pattern, it's been quite easy for me to pick up the stitches. Just just going into the next stitch, the next stitch. I do find picking them up as you go along the blanket a lot more difficult on the sides. Because with this one, because you're working in the round on your on your granny squares, you've got stitches all the way around, haven't you? So we're just picking up all of the all of the stitches as we come along. I'll pull that and press to bring that forward now. So I've got to the corner. Now I would have put some of these ends in before I start this. So I'm gonna just come along here. I want one stitch in there and then one stitch in there. So I've gone into the chain spaces. Okay. Oh yeah, this is my sister Crafty, uh, depends on how you mean Crafty Maria, um, she's not, she's more athletic I would say than Crafty, um, she runs, she, she does triathlons, she plays netball, um, Ali and I got the craft, um, but Claire um, probably does do quite a bit of crafting. We, she's um, a manager in a, a preschool, so I would imagine she does some crafting with the kids. But oh, she knits. She knits, um, which I don't do. Um, she's a brilliant knitter. I remember my mum and my sister made me a cardigan. Uh, oh, we go many, many years back. It was a big, heavy cardigan and they knitted it between them. It was lush. Um, but uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put Claire down for, I don't think she crochets or, um, I wouldn't imagine she sews. The, uh, yeah, it's um, yeah, she knits, so she's uh, been knitting little matami jackets for people having babies over there. She lives in New Zealand, so I should get her to do something to, to go in the. I should get, get her to bring something with her, put her in the uh village show. So she, she's coming home on the Wednesday and it's my granddaughter Elsie's fifth birthday on the Thursday so she's planned that really well. So we'll all go out for a family meal. I can't wait to see her. It's gonna be lush. So we're just picking up, oh I am. So we thought am I doing Am I doing trebles? I was just doing it automatically and I suddenly thought, am I doing trebles? But I am. So we're just coming along to the end of our third thing. Travel it a little way, it's a lot easier to hide and bury your ends. So 
just come back on, on yourself. Bear with me. What else has been going on in the shop? Um, there was some new baby fabric there with panels. There was a panel, a new baby panel. This afternoon we'll take some photos of that to show you. Um, it's very beautiful. Look at all tiny little hearts and stars. But I don't think I've seen it out. So it's coming to the end of here. I'm guessing now. Maybe we can do it from 69. Oh, 59, 60. And then we're going to put two in this chunk face here where we started. One, two, and then to here in the back one. Right, because we are going to uh, change colour now, so my next colour is the duck egg. You take your, uh, your last stitch, you're going to yarn over, into the hole, pull the yarn through, and you're only going to do the first part of your um, of your stitch, and then you get your next colour and you finish the stitch with that colour. Okay, so we'll pull that through. Just go over to try and anchor them, and I'm just going to put in my chain. So put the two chain there and then turn your work. So you've already put in one stitch there. Okay? And you're just then going back and putting one in each of the stitches as you go back. Okay? Now, if you're like me and you always miss one, Take your um, stitch marker, mark the top of your last stitch or your first stitch, which will then be your last stitch coming down. And if you always mark that, you'll know that you've got to finish there and hopefully it will keep it straight. You can see on mine, I think, I missed one somewhere and it's it's walked uh, but I'm back to it being straight again now because I've started to put the, 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 the uh, markers in you just keep going and you just keep changing your it's only one row and then you're changing I would suggest that you uh, every five rows so your ends in because there are going to be a lot of ends because you're only using three stripes you're never going to end up at the, the same end each time so we started with um, the, the teal so you would go to here if you left your teal end here Go to the back. No, you you would. You'd be able to travel. You should be able to travel the wool. Ah, uh, no, I didn't think you'd be able to travel the wool. So you start here. And you go to there. So you've got your bit hanging out, and you would start there, end there, and then go back with that one. So you would start your row here. You'd be able to travel the wool. I'm gonna have to learn how to do that. There you go.
That's my new project. Learn how to travel the wool. But you end up with all these bits of wool hanging out. Is it worth is it worth having the bits hanging out or is it worth travelling the wool? Now that's a question. What colour names are the green, pink, and is it cream or white? I like the stripes. Right, so for me, um, for me, I've got buttermilk is the yellow. Duck egg is this pale green, which might look white to you. Um, this is pale rose, I think. It's one of the roses. And this is a teal. Um, and they're in the Stylecraft um, Special DK. So it's coming out quite neat. So I'm quite I'm quite liking it. I didn't I didn't think I was going to like it looking at this first row, but looking at these neat neat bits, I'm quite enamoured with it. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting it getting it done. I've seen so many I want to do again now, more, more, but I will finish this project. Okay, so um, I'm going to give it a go with travelling the wool on this sleeve and see how that works. I don't know whether it's um, whether it's worth travelling the wool, not being, I haven't done it before. So we will have a look at it. Yes, we've got two more patterns in the shop. Uh, they're not on the website, but I do have two, so drop us a message if you want them, um, and we, we can go from there. Uh, we can always see about getting more if you all want to have a go. So yeah, it's looking, it's looking good, and I'm, I'm, I am pleased with it, and I'm quite liking the colours, and I've chosen the teals and the pinks because they're more my colours, I think. Um, I haven't got a lot in yellow, but I do like this buttermilk. This buttermilk is a really nice, gentle yellow. Very buttery. Right, okay, it's gonna look great, yes. Uh, hopefully, if I get a move on, I could be wearing it to the next retreat. Not that you need one in that place, it's boiling, but I might have it for the next retreat. Okay, that's me then. I'm going back over. I've got um, a salad to eat and uh, Marilyn has just dropped off a cake, which I'm going to have to have a slice. I mean, it would be rude not to, wouldn't it? So I will see you next week. I suppose I'm going to have to think about what we're going to do next week now. Uh, I will see you next week and uh, we'll put pictures up of this new um, panel that we've got in the shop just in case you're looking for baby stuff so take care love you all bye